there you are. Oh, there I am. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. No, that's cool. It looks great. Thank you so much. No worries. No worries. Cool. Yeah. So our podcast is all about your journey in the music industry, how you got to where you are now. Um, and with, with your new band, uh, Fear No Empire. And of course, uh, we can touch on Zebrahead if that's cool with you. Sure. Cool. Yeah. So it, we'll just start by, uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about where you grew up? Okay. So um, I was born in Tehran, Iran. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, and um, around the age of six, um, the revolution happened, and my parents um, fled with me and my sister. Um, my, my grandmother and my grandfather on my dad's side, was uh, they were living in California because my uncles um, were a, in college a, in Fullerton. Um, okay. So we moved to um, La Habra, which is like in Orange County, mm -hmm. and... Um, I lived there uh, growing up most of my life, and then I went to um, school at UC Irvine. Um, I was a, a biology major. I wanted to be, uh, be a doctor. And, yeah, I um, did see that. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> um, and so I went to college and everything, and then I took a year off to apply to medical school and uh, study for the MCAT and everything. And then so I uh, moved back home with my parents from Irvine, and uh, I started hanging out with Ben, who is um, I went to high school with uh, right. a, a lot more and he was in uh, a, like punk bands and stuff. And so I would like go and hang out with him like as their practices were ending because then we'd go out and do stuff. Mm -hmm. And he, he knew I was like a hip hop fan, right? So he would have me come up in between like, there's like three bands that practice that studio. So in between um, bands like coming and going, he would go up there and play like a Cypress Hill bass line. And I'd go up there and like rap Cypress oh, Hill rap. songs or oh, whatever. Oh, cool, yeah. And um, <laughs> so it, that, that was super fun. And so he, he, he had a, um, a record release sh uh, uh, show for one of his, uh, for his band, their album. And he's like, dude, come up and we'll write a song and we'll just perform it in between the bands, just one song or whatever. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, yeah, I've never done that. So um, we wrote, um, the very first song we wrote was a, a song called Check, which um, we ended up uh, using on our first album. Anyway, yeah. long story short, like, we started playing these shows and then we started getting record people coming up, uh, coming to the shows. And it was a time when like, you know, no doubt offspring, like all those punk bands were blown up. And so right. um, they, uh, Columbia records offered us a deal and um, I'd always wanted to travel. And so like, I convinced my parents, I'm like, listen, I'll go for like a year or two. I'll be able to tour. I'll see a lot of the world and stuff. And then I'll come mm -hmm. back and go to back to medical school. <laughs> and then <laughs> that never happened. So um, <laughs> well, we started Zebrahead, and you know, uh, I've been uh, playing Zebrahead forever, a uh, long time. And um, uh, we got home from this last, we did a, a tour with uh, Sum 41 in Europe. Wow. And um, it was great. Yeah, those guys are fantastic. And um, so we got home, and like a few weeks later, like the pandemic hit here. Yeah. And then um, also the, the killing of George Floyd. And so I, I just started writing down like ideas and lyrics and um, not thinking really that I was going to start another band or anything, but just to kind of get off my chest, like how I was feeling. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I started talking to Ben uh, and, and Dan, who I play in Zebrahead with, and they were like feeling a lot of the same emotions that I was feeling. And we, we were like, well, you know, let's let's try to be creative with this, you know? So we would email each other ideas and um, like different parts. And, and um, a lot of them were sample based. We were like, uh, cause we were, everybody's working from home pretty much cause of the quarantine, you know? So sure, yeah. um, we started like thinking, okay, well let's reach out to Mike who plays in death by Syria with Dan. Um, and I had met Mike because we toured with them in Australia uh, like a year ago. Mm -hmm. And he's a rad musician and he was, he was on board. So we, we decided we were going to put uh, record a few songs and it turned out to be six songs. And we were like, let's, let's release it and see what happens. And that's how we created Fear No Empire. Wow. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it was all, this was all started and, and worked through during quarantine then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Um, yeah. I mean, everybody was super inspired, uh, because everybody's pretty frustrated right now. And I think sure. it gave us an outlet, you know, so we were mm -hmm. pretty motivated. Wow. 
Wow, that's really interesting. Um, I want to go back a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, to, sure. to, how did you get into music originally? Like you said, you uh, would go up on stage with with Ben and like start, you know, jamming with him on stage. But prior to that, like, did you did you pick up an instrument at an early age, or how did you get into music? No, you know, I uh, was when I was a kid. Me and my cousins were huge ba fans of like basketball. Um, and it, we'd play all the time. We were on, all, on the school teams and stuff. And uh -huh. my teammates um, would often play like NWA, uh, oh, sure. blaring NWA <laughs> in our warmups, right? So um, I, I started really getting heavily into hip hop. And then I, once I got into like Beastie Boys um, and, and, and like a Tribe Called Quest, where it wasn't necessarily gangster rap, you know what I mean? It was more right. like just um, everyday life. Hip hop, yeah. Even some mu music, like live instruments yeah yeah totally. okay, because sorry. i mean i didn't really relate that, uh, to those lyrics as much you know sure. I, that, but what i loved about it was like it was kind of like punk music in that um it was aggressive you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so yeah then i just pretty much just listened to hip-hop growing up until i met like ben in high school and then he got me into like metallica and, and so, some of the bands like that um mm -hmm. but i grew up mainly on hip-hop and so um, I don't know. I, I think just because I listened to it so much. Um, I, and initially, like, I would, um, when we started, I would be, like, rapping, like, parts of, it, uh, like, Tribe Called Quest and stuff, because we didn't really have <laughs> lyrics at the beginning. So sure. it, it was kind of <laughs> like that. Um, and that's kind of how, I, uh, you know, I got started in music, just being a fan. That's cool. Yeah. And then it ended up, you you guys kind of created this cool, like, rap core genre, you know what I mean? Like, uh you know, two vocalists, and that really wasn't happening a whole lot, or you know, in the earlier 90s, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I, it was pretty unique, because even th there were some other um, artists that were doing similar things, but I, I thought we were a little unique in that it was like more punk, our stuff was like mm -hmm. punk and hip-hop, rather than yeah. rock and hip-hop, you know? Sure, yeah, exactly. So. Very cool. Um, wow, okay, so you, you, you're saying that you guys, you, you got into medical school, you had taken the test to get in, you get into the school and you're like, okay, I'm gonna take a year off. So yeah. in, within that year, you guys have already got a deal, like a record contract. So mm -hmm. tell me about the, how that all kind of happened for you. Um, so we, uh, I remember we were playing uh, a show in Fullerton at a, a club called Club 369. And it was like right before Christmas, it was like the 20th or something. and. Um, it was us like the five dudes in the band and then like some girlfriends and like somebody's mom so it was like empty <laughs> club right yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and we were we were playing and we we're just having fun whatever and then apparently the owner uh, the the guy who ran the club uh randy he was coming in to like to get money the money for the night or something and he caught a couple of songs and he goes hey you, you know you guys um you sound you have a very unique sound i have a friend who um is a manager, um, it would be cool if he came and spoke to you guys or whatever. And that was Todd Singerman, who um, uh, was also Motorhead's manager. And he, um, he came to our um, uh, warehouse where we rehearsed and he was like, um, I think I can get a few people at your next show, um, record label wise, would you be interested? Um, and then he hooked us up with Howard Benson who um, produced uh, our first album. And Howard did a demo for us, a three song demo. Mm -hmm. um, and so they started distributing that and then they booked another show at that same Club 369, like, I don't know, three weeks later. And I think we had like 12 record labels there. And it was like, oh yeah, and it wasn't like, we didn't, there weren't that many people to see us. So it was like <laughs> mainly record people, you know? Yeah. And they just, felt strongly about it. Columbia uh, gave us a nice offer and we, we signed with them. And then literally that same week is when I found out I got into medical school and I had to tell my dad and my mom, I'm like, I think I want to do the music thing for a whole while. Yeah. And they were oh. super supportive though, to be honest with you. They, they saw that it was a pretty cool opportunity. And so they were yeah. happy for me. Yeah. yeah. Worked out for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. So how many, had you played a whole lot of shows prior to that uh, Fullerton gig where the guy, the club promoter came in? Not really, man. I mean, I, we learned quite a lot when, on our first few tours, um, mm -hmm. just 
you know, living in an RV with a bunch of dudes and playing shows every night and, you know, being on your own. And, you know, it was, it was a, a great learning experience. You know, I grew a lot uh, the early years of us touring. And that all happened yeah. after you had signed to Columbia? Yeah. You hadn't, yeah. you hadn't done any touring or anything prior to no, that? No, no, no. Wow. And then they, did they put yeah. you right on the road? Yeah, yeah. We, we toured considerably. Um, and we still do. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're still, you guys are still actively doing stuff, right, with Zebrahead? We, yeah, we're, we've gotten used to it. And now, you know, we, um, there are uh, touring parties, kind of like our family. So, like, I was, um, our sound engineer lives in uh, England, and our um, videographer, uh, he lives in Germany. And uh, so I haven't seen them in the last six months. So we just, oh. like, I've been texting with them actually today and making sure, you know, that everybody's doing okay. But yeah, it's not, you know, we've learned to do it in a way where, you know, it's comfortable and we like the people we're with. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. nice, you know? Yeah. And cause I mean, you guys have a ton of records out with Zebrahead. I mean, you've been doing yeah. this since the what mid nineties. Yeah. Wow. Um, so what would you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I want to. I really want to talk to you about your new project. I just, I have a couple qu more questions about Zebrahead, if that's cool. Um, do, do you do you remember like yeah, the, sure. the pivotal like? Do you remember seeing like a like? Do you remember what, like what record it was when there was kind of like a super shift in like the amount of people that were showing up to your shows and like you know record sales and all that stuff. So, you know, initially when we started, we were very fortunate because um, there's a station in LA called K Rock. Oh, they, yeah. I'm in yeah. San Diego. I know. K -Rock oh, okay, really cool. Well. <laughs> uh, they, they picked up our, our single Get Back and they uh, started playing it. And um, so we, right off the bat, we were like uh, touring with, you know, like when we started, we like did a tour with Cypress Hill. Like, it, like it was like a very short run but I mean coming from a kid who was rapping their songs in the warehouse to like one of my yeah. first tours was you know opening for them so we, we one were of your very first lucky. shows really right you said you came yeah. on stage when your friend was playing the bass line to Cypress Hill <laughs> totally totally <laughs> that's awesome it's, it's crazy but so we were lucky because um because our connection with Columbia and stuff they they really pushed us and so we had um pretty good size um crowds uh, because of being on K Rock and because of like certain stations played us, and then fortunately, like I don't know what what it was, but we kind of broke in Japan as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they were very supportive of us, and so we got to go over there. And we've been going over there quite a bit, um, and so um, b between um, the U.S. and like K Rock and stuff, and then the stuff happening in, in Japan. Um, it, it was, it was a lot um, easier than I guess it should have been, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it's happened kind of quickly. Yeah, I've, I'm looking at you guys put out a record like exclusively in Japan, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you've like went gold there, like number one, like, I mean, that record you put out exclusively in Japan, it looks like it was number one on their billboard chart. Was it? <laughs> yeah, that's insane. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Waste of MFZB. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was like... an old one. No, yeah. <laughs> it was number one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. Do you, do you remember, like, how did you start noticing the success in Japan? Just going there and being like, whoa, these shows are much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they, they, you know, we got a lot of like video spins and like a lot of radio push there. Okay. Uh, and it just, you know, that, that when that machine is behind you, we, we signed with Sony Japan at the time and they, you know, they're very good at what they do. So th they um, helped us out quite a bit. Wow. That's cool. Th yeah, and then thanks. so when you go back there, you just know it's going to be a, a massive show. You know, and uh, the, another thing is, though, we've been going there for like 25 years. So <laughs> we have some really good friends there now. Um, yeah. And, you know, they have families now. So like, that's a whole other thing. It's like, not only playing the shows, but going and getting to hang out with these people that you kind of grew up with. And uh -huh. now they have kids and, you know, their wives and their husbands and stuff. So um, that is a huge um, positive thing that we've experienced is we've learned a lot about Japanese culture and met so many cool people in Japan. Um, and it's, it's just been fantastic for us. That's so awesome. Um, 
I, I was going to ask you now. Um, oh, yeah. Like, what would you say the, uh, like, the biggest milestone was for you guys in, in Zebrahead? Like, was there, like, a tour that you got and you're like, whoa, I can't believe it? Or um, I guess, you know, one, one thing, again, um, you know, you've been doing this, we've been doing this for quite a while. So um, one thing that I, I, I'm very proud of is there's a, a, f- a festival in Japan called Summer Sonic. And mm-hmm. um, we, we, I guess we have played that festival more than any other band uh, ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and um, we, you know, and I was mentioning, like, I think we beat out the Chili Peppers uh, because they played like six or seven times and we played like eight or nine times. I don't know. Oh, that's but awesome. That like a milestone <laughs> yeah. some of these Chili Peppers fan too, you know. That's um, cool. Yeah, but for me, just the fact that, you know, people still care about our music and come come to the shows and stuff, that's, I guess, the most, uh, you know, thing that makes me uh, happy. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. And you yeah. guys are still doing it, obviously, to, to this day. You said you just got back from a tour when the pandemic hit? Yeah, yeah, we were in Europe um, with uh, Sum 41. Sum 41. And, um, like, we started hearing about the pandemic like on our like the last couple of days and then when when we got home it got uh you know like a couple of weeks later it just hit the u.s and then um yeah so then that wow. that's kind of when we were like re- really inspired to you know kind of voice our opinion on some of the things that are happening here mm-hmm. you know and that was the birth of uh fear no empire yeah yeah okay so you said you were starting by writing lyrics out and then you were kind of did you reach out to the other people and say, hey, like, I've got these, these lyrics, like, let's put something together. How, how, tell me how the process started. Yeah, so um, I, you know, with Pro Tools and stuff, everybody has their, like, set up at home. So I was just, like, using, like, certain plugins and, like, I would make a loop and then I would just write my ideas down. And then um, I would send them to Ben and Dan because I mentioned, hey, you guys, I'm like really inspired right now. Um, I don't know where you're at because everybody, you know, with the quarantine and um, everything happening, um, you know, w- with the death of uh, George Floyd and everything, like some people aren't necessarily in the mood to be creative. You know, some people right. are processing it differently. So I just kind of hit them up and I was like, hey, I'm super inspired right now. I don't know where you're at. And they were like, yeah, let's do this. Like, um, we're in, we're, we're inspired too. And then we got Mike involved um, as well and just kind of started emailing each other or Dropboxing each other ideas. And then, you know, Dan would go, oh, wait, I have a great riff to go over this, like, part. And then Ben, you know, would come up with his parts. And then um, when we got to the point where we're like, okay, we can't really go too much further um, unless we go record the, the song. We feel like it's done. So we um, then would go in with Paul Miner, who we've worked with a, a bunch in the past. Um, he's done Death by Stereo and Zebrahead albums. Okay. And um, he, we did two songs initially, and he w- uh, thought that um, he he thought that he, they had a uh, a chance to, you know, get the message out there. And mm-hmm. so he was on board. And so we did two two songs, and then went back and wrote like another uh, three. And then um, went back again and recorded those three. So we had five. And then we thought we were done. And that night when we were like, okay, let's just do an EP, five songs. Um, we went back home and I, I was listening to the songs late at night. And I don't know, it was like midnight or one. And I te- texted Ben. I'm like, hey, dude, I really want to do a, like a punk song on this. Like we, we don't have any, any punk material really on this. Um, and he's like, yes, let's do it. So that night he sent me... Um, like just some, some ideas and in the morning we wrote the sixth song and that song's called super spreader and um finished that and then went and recorded that like two days later and then we, we called it a day at six songs so wow okay that's where we are now and that's where you're at and what do you think you guys are going to do with it are you going to play shows and, and everything is, is that the intention I mean, we we hope so. Yeah, I mean, once the pandemic is over, um, right. we can't wait to like go and start playing shows again and, and kind of see how these songs resonate with people. You know, so it's gonna be really interesting to see you know how people react to them. I guess. Yeah, I know. Because you're still gonna keep going with Zebrahead, so it's just gonna be a second project, right? Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. We and all our zebrahead um, tours have been postponed till next summer. We, we were supposed to be out, you know, um, like everybody else, and they just everything got pushed back a year. So we'll be going back out with zebrahead as well. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Well, so you and then because of COVID, have you? You haven't even really been able to. This whole record is almost like written, uh, you know, in and you know you wrote your pieces and it's all done over the internet right you guys didn't play together as a full band yeah totally no o only time we did was when we recorded and you know everybody did their best to like social distance and wear masks and it was <laughs> yeah. so bizarre man you know like but you have to do it you know it's it's, <laughs> it's it's the new normal now until this gets figured out so i know it's it's wild um how aside from like press stuff how are you are you guys going to be doing like instagram live things or how how do you feel about like promoting the the new project we haven't done any instagram live stuff um we we have a video uh that we are releasing wednesday and that's when the first song is coming out it's called revolt mm -hmm. um but mainly i've been doing some like um just audio interviews um mm -hmm. this is my first zoom podcast um <laughs> I, I've done a couple of written interviews, um, but they're, you know, we're starting to do more and I'm, I, I'm hopefully, you know, when, when the songs are more of the songs are released, um, you know, I, I'll be able to do uh, m more and more of these, but I'm yeah. um, just trying to get the word out. We really believe in this project. We, we believe in the message of the project and we think musically it's different than anything we've done. So we're, we're pretty stoked on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so tell me about the first song revolts. The first song you guys are going to release that's coming out. Uh, Wednesday yeah uh, why did why that song first um that, that was we wrote two songs initially but, um, mm -hmm. that was one of the first two songs um, oh, okay uh, basically um, because the, the, the message of the the song resonates with me because like I said I'm, I'm an immigrant and like I came to this country when I was six years old mm -hmm. and um, the way the administration now is um, sep separating and incarcerating children um, you know, taking them away from their parents and, and especially in the time right now where, you know, the pand pandemic is um, so dangerous, especially being confined in a place with a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. um, I just couldn't imagine what, if that would have happened to me when I came to the country, you know, seeking asylum, like um, being separated from my parents and going through all the things they're going through. And so I uh, felt pretty strongly about, about that m message and we wanted to come out with that song because um, it, it is such an important issue and we wanted to kind of shine a light on that and hopefully get people inspired and motivated to, um, you know, use their platform or their voice to, you know, also bring light to, to things that they feel like um, shouldn't be happening or even, you know, if they can help. Um, so uh, that's why we went with Revolt initially. I love it. Very cool. And then the whole record coming out in... Um, it's going to, yeah, October 28th, I believe it's coming oh, out. This, so coming out in a few months. It's yeah. Yeah. That's a six song EP. Um, and it, it should be released on, on, it's a week actually from the, the, uh, election. So. Oh, okay. A week from it. Yeah. Week. Yeah. Before. Week before. Mm -hmm. Right on. Awesome, man. Well, I can't, I can't wait to hear it. And in the new song coming out, uh, in the next, next couple days. Right? Yeah. Wednesday. 19th. Right on. Yeah, right yeah. on. <laughs> um, cool, man. Well, I have one more question for you. I'm going to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, I, I would say just to try and be yourself. Uh, don't try to follow any like trends. Um, you know, use your voice and, and use your perspective, your point of view. It, it'll it'll um, make you unique. And um, I think um, it'll keep you true to yourself. And don't go chasing after something that, you know, it might be popular at the time because um, I think that's a very short uh, sighted thing. And um, especially if you want a career as an artist, um, you know, use your voice to talk about things that you care about and that are real to you. Bring it back,